This video is going to show you how to perform a matched pairs hypothesis test. Now we discussed how to design a matched pairs experiment earlier in the course, but now we actually have the tools to formally perform a hypothesis test. Let's start out with an example. A shoe company wants to test a new design for a new pair of running shoes. They recruit 12 sprinters and have each sprinter run the 100 meter dash in their pair of old running shoes. They take a break for an hour, and then run the 100 meter dash in the new revolutionary shoes. We want to know if there's a significant improvement in the runner's times with the new shoe at the 5% level of significance. Here's the problem with this scenario. We have two samples, but they're independent from one another because we're using the same people in each sample. We need a test that allows for dependency in the samples. That test is the matched pairs test. Here's a visualization of how a matched pairs test works. We begin with the population of interest. From there, we take a random sample from the population and have each member of the sample perform the task that we're interested in. We take a measurement of the variable, average the results, and calculate what we'll call x bar before. Hold on to this sample mean. Next, each subject undergoes some type of treatment or training and they then repeat the same task after the training session. We take a post-training measurement for all subjects and calculate that sample mean, x bar after. Now that we have all of the information, we take the difference between the sample means by subtracting the after mean from the before mean to get the sample mean of the differences. Our ultimate goal here is to determine if the treatment or training had a significant effect on the participants' responses. Here's the sample data we're going to use for this problem. The original data consists of the individual before and after times for each subject. We can calculate the sample mean and sample standard deviation for each. The sample mean running time for the old shoes is 11.451 seconds with a sample standard deviation of 0.544 seconds. For the new shoes, the sample mean was 11.354 seconds with a sample standard deviation of 0.562 seconds. We want to determine if the after mean is significantly less than the before mean, so we'll take the difference between each pair of times. This is what you see in column D on the right. We're not explicitly working with the raw data. We're actually concerned about the sample statistics for the differences. The average difference in running times between the two samples is 0.097 seconds, with a sample standard deviation of 0.117 seconds. These are the statistics we're going to end up using. It turns out that we don't even need the sample standard deviations for the individual before and after times. Formally, the matched pairs test is used for performing inference on two dependent populations when an observation from one sample can be paired with a similar observation from the other sample. In order to run this test, we need the same condition as the one sample t test. We either need a sample size of at least 30, or we need the original population to be normally distributed. If this holds, then the test statistic follows a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom and it's calculated by taking the sample mean difference and subtracting off the hypothesized difference in the numerator. This then gets divided by the sample standard deviation of the differences over the square root of the sample size. Let's formally run through the test now, assuming that running times are normally distributed because otherwise our sample size is too small to run the test. We know that the average before running time was 11.451 seconds and the average after running time was 11.354 seconds. The sample standard deviation of the differences was 0.117 and the sample size was 12. The hypothesized difference we're using here is zero and we're doing this test at the 5% level of significance. Here are the hypotheses. The null hypothesis is that the before and after times are equal while the alternative hypothesis reflects the idea that the average time for the old running shoes is greater than the average time for the new running shoes. We need the hypothesized difference of zero in the hypotheses, so we'll subtract the average time for the new shoes from each side. 
This gives us the mean time for the old shoes minus the mean time for the new shoes is equal to zero in the null hypothesis, and the difference between the two means is greater than zero in the alternative hypothesis. Next, we'll calculate the test statistic. We know that the test statistic follows a t-distribution, and it's calculated by taking the difference between the sample means and subtracting off the hypothesized difference in the numerator. The denominator is the sample standard deviation of the differences divided by the square root of the sample size. This gives us 11.451, the mean for the old design, minus 11.354, the mean for the new design, minus 0 in the numerator, divided by 0.117 over the square root of 12. Working this out gives us a test statistic of 2.872. The degrees of freedom are calculated by taking the sample size minus 1. 12 minus 1 gives us 11 degrees of freedom. For the p-value, we have an upper one-sided test, so the p-value is calculated by taking the area above 2.872 in a t-distribution with 11 degrees of freedom. Using Excel, we can get the exact value of 0 0.0076. As for our decision, we'll reject the null hypothesis since the p-value of 0 0.0076 is less than 0 0.05, the level of significance, and we'll conclude that the new design of the shoe significantly decreases the amount of time it takes sprinters to complete the 100-meter dash.